This video is proudly recorded and produced on OpenBSD. This video is about how to set up C-Shoot or C-Shoot on OpenBSD. For that, let's have a brief introduction on what it is. So C-Shoot stands for Change Root. It allows us to limit access to the file system when we are C-Shooting. And we can look at it as some sort of a simplified or basic container or sandbox environment to do some experiments. Mind you that Citroot, the one at least shipped with the OpenBSD, is not secure. That doesn't mean that if you are running a process on Citroot, things are completely isolated and the process running in the Citroot doesn't have access to the host. That's not correct. The process can escape the jail and as a result of it can actually harm the host system. So the main purpose, at least for me, to just like set up things uh, set up some software without polluting my my host machine and installing a bunch of packages that I may not need later on. For example, uh, in the how to set up the LAMP server video, I have run the entire process on the VMM. I could easily done that on the C root. It would be uh, from performance perspective faster. Setting up CSHoot on OpenBSD is not that difficult, but we need to take some steps. For that one, we are going to use these two great articles. One is written by Eric Rodman, and it's uh, written for OpenBSD 6.6. .6. And we have another one by Tubsta, Tech and other stuff. And this one, I am not sure for which version, version 5.5 .5 apparently. They are quite dated, but nonetheless, we are going to follow this combination of these two. So the first step according to the articles is to make sure that the file system or the partition that we are going to do the C shoot on, they do not have no dev and no SUID. In my case, I check the FS tab and my root partition actually doesn't have none of those. This could be either I removed it long term that I have no recollection of it anymore or it could be because I installed OpenBSD in a single partition, in the root partition, everything. Then there is no these two flags present. In case that uh, for your partition these two flags are present, what you have to do is either to remove these two and then restart your machine. That could have some security implications. I am not sure exactly what implications. Or in case that you have a spare partition, you can format it with the OpenBSD file system and then do the CS root on that. Moving forward, what we got to do, we are going to create a directory for CS root. So I am in my home directory. I'm just going to go create CS root here. We have to, to grab the compress archive of the base system from the FTP server. So what you can do, you can just type FTP OpenBSD, then you go to the mirror page, and then from here, grab version and as well as the architecture that matches your host system. In my case, is AMD64. We copy this address, and I'm just gonna demo you not do the full download because it takes time. But what you can do, you can just type wget r dash dash no parents and then pass dash a tgz because we are just interested about the tgz files. And then pass the URL here and then it's going to just download the tgz files. Once you have done that, which I already done it to save some time here, we are going to extract these files to the C shoot directory that we created a couple of seconds ago. So tar c slash home and would be C shoot and xvzf. We are going to remove the v for verbose, we don't need it. And then we are going to extract it. I'm going to extract all the compressed files and then we resume. All right, so all the files are decompressed. The next step is to go to the C shoots directory and we are going to the dev directory. As you can see, the directory structure is similar to the root file system. So if I do here, it's more or less the same. 
nonetheless we are going to the dev directory of the CS root and then we have to run this script make dev all and this one should be done with the do as or you can switch to the root user if you don't want to type do as so now we already have all the dev devices created according to the Eric Rodman which I think is it quite makes sense uh, what we have to do next is to copy the master password password group to the Etsy of the sysroot and then create a user or a copy or you or our own user so what we are going to do do as cps slash etc master password password group and this one C shoot etc and then what we are going to do do as mkdir dash p and we are going to create this change the ownership do as ch own And the next step is to copy actually the install URL and resolve conf. Install URL, resolve conf. And now what we can do, we are ready to sysroot to what we created earlier. So do as sysroot slash home sysroot. So in this step, you may either succeed to sysroot or if you are like me, you have changed the default terminal, then you see such an error. So I installed bash, I saw up KSH with bash and now I'm running into this issue because sysroot is trying to run the bash on the, the, the sysroot that we set up and bash is not there yet. So what I can do, I can just simply type sh or ksh and now we have successfully go to the ch root. So the next step is that I'm going to just type pkg add bash, but you see that we, we are having an issue here. All right. Now what we have to do is to update the password database pw mkdv etc master password and then also configure the shared library user local lib as well as in case that you want to work with the x11 apps x11 r6 lib and then we do the sysmerge fantastic now what we can do we can just type pkg add for example bash and this should install bash for us and we can actually switch to the normal user and if i type who i am it shows my user in sysroot because we followed the eric rodman steps to create a user there at this point if you don't want to do any x11 application forwarding you can just pause or close the video but in case that you want to do x forward for any application that is running in the sysroot environment then we need to take a couple uh, more uh, extra steps so what i'm going to do i'm going to just quickly demo you how to run the x clock and as well as 0 AD because that's also a bigger application through the X11 forward. So for the X clock, if I just type X clock, it says that it cannot open display 0. So on the host machine, we are going to run the Zephyr server. So this one, display 1, it's going to listen to the TCP and we want it in the window mode. And now what I do, I say just export display equals to one two seven zero zero one display number one and we type the x clock again and you can see x clock is successfully running here and if i quit it exits so what we are going to do afterwards just to make sure that things are working fantastically without any lags we are just going to type the pkg at zero ad after this one is finished, I continue the rest of the video.
Fantastic, Zero AD is now installed on the Sysroot environment and if we try to type it, it says that actually we cannot run the, the game with the root permission so what we have to do, we are going just to switch to the normal user and then just type Zero AD and oh because we don't have the display yet because we just switched the user so if we do display it's empty so what we are going to do export display 127001 colon 1 and then we type 0 AD and uh, it's running here in the sysroot environment that's all for this video if you like it don't forget to press the like button and in case that you haven't subscribed to the channel you can subscribe to the channel as well have a great time cheers I want to thank all of the amazing Patreon and Coffee supporters. Your generosity and support means the world to me and keeps me really motivated to continue creating content. Thanks again for your generosity and contribution.